we're going to take a look at seven common functions that you would see in college algebra and higher. And these seven common functions, which can sometimes be referred to as parent functions, are given here in the first part of your notes. Now I want to point out to you a couple of things as you look at the graphics, because you're going to need to uh, be able to identify the graphs, the seven graphs here, and understand what, uh, what the characteristics are of the function. When you're looking at this, you can see down below, uh, when you're looking at this picture, you can see down below the domain and the range are given of the functions, uh, whether or not they're constant, such as increasing, decreasing, or constant, on what intervals that would be. And then the other thing that's listed for you down here is the symmetry. So we have even, odd, and neither from a previous lesson. The most basic function that we, we start off learning about is the constant function. And this is a function where the y values are never going to change, so it is considered constant. That's kind of the characteristic. It's basically, it, it is a horizontal line crossing at the y axis there at c, whatever value that is. So that's the basic one. The next one, I'm going to put both of these up here. The next line that you're probably, or the next function you're probably very familiar with is an identity function. It's called here, but it's a line, isn't it? y is equal to mx plus b is the equation of this particular line. It's the function y is equal to, or f of x is equal to x. And so you've, you've seen that one for a long time. As you move through these graphs, I want you to go ahead and add a couple of points to the graphs for me. And they, it's, it's the points that you can see that I have labeled here. These are called register points. And so as we talk about translating or, or m shifting our graphs left, right, up, down, it's easy -er <laughs> to have these register points for us to be able to shift. So we have the identity function, which is a line. We have the absolute value function over here, which looks like a V. That makes sense because when we take the absolute value of negative numbers, we always get positive numbers, right? So the negative X values over here correspond to positive Y values on the function. And you can see down here, if we just wanted to talk about increasing versus decreasing, you're given the interval on where the function is decreasing and then the interval for where it is increasing. So those are the three that we're looking at to begin with. Now let's come down here and I'm going to put these two up. So these are the uh, fourth and fifth ones. And you have your standard quadratic function, which is uh, f of x is equal to x squared. Notice the register points I put on here. This is a parabola pointing up. You should be fairly familiar with that one. This fourth one, let's see, the, no, the fifth one we have right here would be the square root function, where we are just uh, f of x is equal to square root of x. And it makes sense for this function to only live here in the positive x and y values because I can only take the square root of a positive x and when I do, I'm only going to get, in this case, I'm only getting a positive y value. Now let's look down here at the remaining two that we have. We have a cubic function, which is f of x is equal to x cubed. This characteristic, uh, the characteristic of this function would be that it comes up on the left hand side, it scoots across the origin and then continues off on the right. Okay, and then if we were to look at the cubed root function, it looks similar to the cube function, except it's kind of been rotated, right? It comes, uh, it comes, still comes in, but it's more horizontal. So it's kind of laying on its side as opposed to being vertical in this position here. So these are the standard seven functions that you need to learn f to be able to identify really quickly um, as you move through the rest of the course.